this will be a slow process where we will gradually increase the uh, issues that we solve until ultimately we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. But I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. And this is extremely important. I think that we talk about AI being potentially the last dimension that we have. I think that a high bandwidth BMI might be like really the first dimension in many ways of like the next chapter of the bot. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And then the, the interface to the, um, to the to the chip is, is wireless. So you have no wires plugging out of your head. They're very important. Um, so you, it, it's, it basically Bluetooths to your phone. But we'll have to watch the App Store updates for that. Make sure we don't have a driver issue. And he comes of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And we hope to uh, have this uh, aspirationally in, in a new occasion um, before the end of next year. This is not, not far. I think you look at that, you might think that looks pretty messy and it's not clear what's going on. But I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to take those neurons and I'm going to rearrange them so that they're in the order of the tuning that they have. But just as I told you about those two neurons. And if you do that, look what happens. Now suddenly structure emerges. And I think you'll agree, looking at that, that there's information in that stack of neurons that tells you about the movement. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to do that kind of magic in an automated way to read out, to, to read out the movement. The way we do that is by building something that we call decoding algorithms. These are mathematical algorithms that are tuned based on data like these to be able to take in just those rasters of spiking activity and output the movement that's, that the person wants to. For these little fake data, I built a very, very simple decoder, and sure enough, it's able to, uh, to capture the intent. This is what we want to do on a bigger scale. That even if you're not actually making a movement, even if you're just thinking about the movement, or even if you're watching someone else make a movement, the cells and motor cortex respond in a similar way. With that, we think that people will be able to get naturalistic control over their computers, not just a mouse, but also a keyboard, game controllers, and potentially other devices. That's what we're trying to do. We developed this robot that can rapidly and precisely insert hundreds of individual threads representing thousands of distinct electrodes into the cortex in less than an hour. This tool allows a surgeon to aim between the blood vessels that cover the surface of the brain with micron scale precision. Here the robot is selecting individual electrode threads and placing them into the brain in a pre-planned location with remarkable accuracy and repeatability. Since the start of Neuralink, we've gone through three major revisions to the analog pixel, progressively improving both the size and power while maintaining performance. And our latest pixel on the right is at least five times smaller than the known state of the art of similar architecture with one pixel dedicated per electrode as published in the academic literature. All of these functionalities that I outlined are integrated into a single four by five millimeter so uh, each of, this is in fact a, a traces of a bunch of electrodes that came off of one of our devices, a bunch of electrodes from a single thread. And uh, each trace shows you a voltage waveform in time as it's coming off of one of those threads. Uh, we have algorithms that can detect these spikes in real time as they're happening. And that allows us to collect data.